Hello everyone, I am Umesh Mukhi, Professor of Management at FCV EISP, and I welcome you to the Global Leaders Podcast, where we have international managers who have assumed leadership opportunities in Brazil and who would be willing to share their experiences about challenges and opportunities of leading in Brazil. Hence the name Global Leaders Podcast. Along with me is Professor Paul, who will be also joining us for the podcast. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul. Like you may said, I'm Professor of Strategic Management. And today we are pleased to welcome our first guest, who is Olivier Janina from Adidas. So it's a real pleasure to have you uh, with us today. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Really pleased to be here. When I crossed the gate today of FGV was very special, not only because what FGV stands for, but also it reminds me of my years of business school. So thank you for the invitation. Great. Thank you very much for joining us, Olivier. And uh, let's, uh, let's start. So um, Brazil is a challenging country, uh, specifically from a business perspective. So our first question is what made you ready to live in Brazil, Olivier? So maybe a few words around, around my role today. Today I have the pleasure to lead uh, Adidas operations in Brazil. It's a very strategic market for us in Latin America and also globally because of the influence of sports and lifestyles in the world. And I think my well, good answer, I think to that question is you're never completely ready. Uh, you have to be humble, especially with Brazil being Brazil with all its complexity, all its diversity. But what really helped me, I think, is that I came actually from Latin America before. I was working for Adidas already in Panama, where we have our headquarters for Latin America. And for six years there, I was leading different roles from uh, sales uh, to tech uh, to business development. And during those six years, I was able to travel a lot, not only to Brazil, but to Argentina, Colombia, Peru. So I was traveling approximately two to three weeks per uh, per month. So you get to understand a little bit what makes Latin America so special. And even if Brazil has its complexity, actually is not unique in this uh, area. And so I, I was probably uh, fortunate uh, to have the six years to prepare me uh, to the culture I would face here, but also to all the opportunities you have in this unique country. And we're gonna get there, I guess. Great. Uh, so, so Olivier, coming from France, heading to, to, to Panama and Latin America and now to Brazil. Um, what is the best experience in Brazil for you so far? I mean, first of all, uh, when we work here, we are blessed uh, by the positive energy of people. Uh, we are blessed uh, by the resilience that you find with people facing difficulties every day, but finding a way to rebound. Uh, we are blessed by the, the culture of innovation. Uh, and I think Europe could learn a lot from Brazil if you look at the way uh, uh, digital is, uh, is part of the culture here, actually. Uh, I often say that even the the lowest income uh, class um, as a digital, I mean, as a phone in there, in the pocket and actually uh, living 100% connected. So there's a lot uh, uh, to learn uh, and take uh, from Brazil. And that's what we also try to, to play back when we are in headquarters, when we are in Germany, to also help understand, hey, maybe we should look into that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should consider getting closer to, to Brazil in that, in that area. The second part is that it's not a major market understand that you still have growth opportunities. So you can uh, navigate uh, uh, different playing fields that maybe uh, in my own country you would not be able to do. So we are opening new distribution. Uh, we are reconsidering the way we source products. Uh, we are reflecting every day on how we manage our exposure to the Brazilian reais. Mm -hmm. So there is lots of dimensions that uh, basically help you grow as a leader. And I always say that, yeah, you need to take the best of every country. Of course, Brazil has still a lot to uh, learn also from other parts of the world. But in my case, I'd rather look at uh, what can help us get better as mm -hmm. individuals, as leaders, but also as a company. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. It was very interesting, to, I think, for our audience as well to uh, uh, to see uh, the, the positive elements that you, you mentioned. Um, but we also know that leading is uh, making decisions and sometimes tough decisions. So uh, can you share with us uh, some of the challenges that you have been facing in the past few months? Mm, plenty. Um, so maybe two reflection points that can be interesting for the audience. First of all, uh, it all starts with culture and it all starts with trust. Uh, so when you come as a leader in a, in, a, in a country or in a company like Adidas in Brazil and you're part of the very few foreigners, you cannot come with the answers. 
you first need to come very humble. You need to invest time in understanding the culture, in speaking the language, in connecting with customers, with employees, being on the ground. If you don't do that, then you get resistance or you, you get, let's say, kind of a fake adhesion because of your title, but not because of the belief. You need to get to the belief and to get to the belief, you need to create proximity uh, to the teams and to all our stakeholders. So this is probably one of our biggest learning is be patient. Uh, I was probably not patient enough. Uh, so you need to invest time to, to connect deeply and that there is no miracle. You need to invest six to nine months. Uh, and at the same time, don't forget why you've been appointed. You've been appointed because you bring a difference. Uh, because you, you come with a different, let's say, a, a background, with a different experience. So you're also there to create some sort of frictions. So I think you have to find this sweet spot, this balance uh, between culture fit, but also culture add. What is it that you bring to the table also with your difference? So I think this is this complex equation to fix every single day. I feel good some weeks. I feel I'm failing other weeks, but all in all, this is what we're trying to do. But again, the foundation is trust uh, because you're suffering from bias when you arrive there, mm -hmm. uh, that you can't get it, that you don't understand, that EU is different. So you need to uh, connect deep enough to have those conversations that create uh, the environment for us uh, to have open and honest conversation and then to be able to co-create something together. But it doesn't happen overnight. So again, the topic of phasing the ambition, I think, is key. Mm -hmm. You actually mentioned something very interesting. So six to nine months in building trust. That's more like the organizational part where you kind of, you know, get the, the, the cultural fit. But let's look at the practical side. You have certain deliverables yeah. as, as a sporting uh, company. Um, so in six to nine months and even henceforth, um, could you probably illustrate that you are facing X, Y, Z specific challenge yeah. in an industry yeah. and how would you lead that and how did you lead that? I love the question. And uh, I mean, there's a very famous quote that says there's no uh, long term without short term. Mm -hmm. And for sure, as a leader, there's no patience for you to deliver the core. And the core for us is, of course, delivering our numbers top line, but essentially bottom line. And we know that profitability in Brazil is a challenge for any company. You saw some announcement this year, and I will not name them out of respect, but a number of companies face difficulties. So we know that operating this country is complex by nature, uh, structural cost of operating, uh, import duties, uh, of course, currency exposure. So, so it's difficult to manage the PNL and to make it work over time. So I think where there is no time is to make sure that you have the right leadership team uh, to help you secure that you have a good understanding of the ecosystem and that you will be able to get to those short term results that will buy you time. Okay, so I think uh, your best ally in Brazil uh, is your CFO uh, and your legal lead, right? Those two profile and of course HR, because then you have the bridge to culture and you get a sense of the engagement level. But maybe in other markets, you will look into sales and you will look into marketing. I think in Brazil, it starts with finance, it starts with legal and it starts with HR. This magical triangle is the one you need to understand very clearly, Great. very quickly. And then it gives you the sense of confidence and serenity that maybe you can sleep over the weekend. Yeah. But before you get that to your point, say, I'm going to land that plane, you know? Yeah, I like that point, Paul, Paul, he made about the, the magical triangle, isn't it? Like you have legal, HR and, and finance. That's very interesting. So probably, you know, yeah. there's some secret formula to have success in Brazil. Maybe, maybe. And again, my profile is more sales and commercial. So I'm very comfortable with that part. I've been 20 years in the company. We always like to speak about differences, but there's lots of commonality. Well, we sell football, we sell running, we sell lifestyle in China, in Korea, in the US or in Brazil as well. Uh, we like to say we're different, but we use our own we use franchise, we use our own stores and our best retail partners are also very important to us. Mm -hmm. So actually there's lots of commonalities. So that part I understand well. Then what's diff different is of course the Brazilian context. So that's why I put my effort when I jump mm -hmm. into a company like or a role like this one. Chris, uh, just following up on this um, idea that you uh, you need to have some specific people that you can uh, you can trust, of course, and you can also well, discuss with them maybe some of the challenges that we also discussed. So, um, and, and you were you were coming from another country. So, uh, can you tell us a bit uh, what what were the dynamics within the team? So, did, did you also have some other people that were coming uh, from other countries, or it was more local people? So, yeah. Um, how do you? Well, if you can give us a scenario a bit more of uh, yeah, who is the team that is uh, around you? 
Yeah, so again, I think my priority role beyond the landing on the plane on financials and securing the profitability in a complex environment, I think is, uh, is uh, leading the culture. Of course, you don't do the culture alone. You need the organization to embrace the culture, but it starts from the top. It starts from me, it starts from the first line management. So this part is the fundamental backbone that you need to invest time on and, and you need to come across as authentic. You cannot fake it because people yeah. see that. So again, proximity and leaving the values for me has been a fundamental since day one and making sure that the people around me first line but what we call the leaders community which is the group of leaders reporting to my first line so we're talking 60 people out of a 600 people organization are living it so this is why i put a lot of time being close to them making sure we have the right people making sure we are making decisions as well to attract talent to bring that diversity maybe from different countries because we need you know this mix of people different gender we have uh, 50 percent uh, uh, gender equality in leadership today 55 zero so we are there but it's a journey and of course racial diversity uh, so, so we're working a lot of, of that topic because we we believe in the in the in uh, in bringing fresh perspective to challenge us to think differently. So to answer your question more directly, uh, today we we are, let's say, 97% Brazilian, I think, uh, but we are changing that progressively. We will always have a large domination of Brazil because we are in Brazil and we need people grounded, connected. And again, I think it's also a tribute to the country, but at the same time, bring talent from other countries to, yeah, to help us elevate our leadership, elevate our game. There's lots of things we do great, a couple of things we don't do so great, and some people can get us faster there. Uh, but again, what is no compromise is on the culture, what is no compromise on the values, and when we have people who are, who are not in line with that, uh, I think they need to live uh, either on their own or we help them. Uh, but this is not negotiable for us. So mm -hmm. casting is king, culture is king, and casting, of course, leads to culture. So us, me and my team, I think we're investing a lot of time in that to make sure we have the right people, we attract and we retain. And retaining mm -hmm. is also a challenge, but I think our culture is our best uh, weapon, if I can say that, our best lever. Uh, because again, salary, you can always have a company that pay you more, but when you have a culture like ours, it's difficult to leave. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know that because many people leave and they call us after and say, wow, how fantastic is it to work at Adidas? You know, I miss it. And, and that's a bit the beauty. I mean, myself, I would never expect you to say 20 or the same company, but I had multiple life, multiple country, multiple function. And for me, it's difficult to leave today. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, it's tempting once in a while to reflect and it's part of the game, but it's unique. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very interesting because uh, we don't come across um, many leaders uh, who are in senior position who have been consistently in the company for a long time. Mm -hmm. So so this is what leads me to our uh, uh, um, next question. Being French, managing German company in Brazil, so it's mm -hmm. the right fit for global leadership, mm -hmm. uh, managing expectations for your headquarters. Um, and I believe that there would be many other people, um, professionals who would be um, eventually in future undertaking some global positions in Brazil yeah. or those who are already in Brazil and they may be facing some challenges. Uh, what would be two to three key advices you would like to give them? So, uh, good one. Um, so, so first of all, uh, curiosity. I think it's one of the biggest value we, we need to embrace and I, I try to stimulate myself on that. That's one of my main topics with my girls and to my teams and to the young talents I'm, I'm doing, uh, you know, co coffee talks with is a uh, curiosity to open up, to think, you know, beyond the obvious to, yeah, to, to think differently, to open up. Uh, I often say, uh, don't be worried to get lost and come back stronger. When I left sales to tech, people were looking at me, well, why are you doing that? When I left tech to supply chain, people said the same. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was a difficult moment because you're out of comfort zone, you, you were into an impact role to maybe a more humble moment where you're into learning. But when you combine all of that, it's becoming a nice recipe for success. Mm -hmm. So today, if I'm able to perform uh, without arrogance in that role, it's because I built pro my profile, I built my learnings. Um, and navigating functions and countries made me able today to adapt quickly, to read a context, uh, to understand the importance of culture, because I've been able to speak to with very diverse people along the journey. So curiosity, uh, going outside of comfort zone, and it's not just a statement, it's really doing it. Uh, so going beyond the obvious, I mean, brand, I'm going to work for that. No, maybe you love brand, but maybe mm -hmm. you're going to go into finance. Maybe you're going to go into supply chain. You can go back to your first love. Mm -hmm. You can go back. It's not a definite move. You can go to India. You can go to Europe. You can go back. It's no, it's not a commitment for life, but get lost a bit. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I, I, I like this perspective because normally we are we are always thinking about a careers uh, uh, a sequence of different moments, so uh, different experiences. Like you mentioned, the fans or maybe your supply chain. It's also different countries, okay, different cultures. But um, um, w when you are thinking about, there are moments where you basically uh, learn, so you are in a learning mode. There are many things that, uh, many new skills that you need to learn, and there are maybe some moments you are going to capitalize, yeah. you are going to leverage these skills, maybe to um, to, uh, to 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 move into a more responsibility jobs. So I like this idea of also learning and capitalizing and. The career is the sequence of these moments. Exactly, and when you are young, you are don't you are not patient. We always speak to Gen Z. We have yesterday. I was doing a, a coffee chat with 20 people who applied for the coffee chat. So it's something we do every month at Adidas. And there was many new interns, and they have lots of questions around that. You know, around moving, around next step, and and I, and the idea is to try to have the this conversation. That, hey, you're gonna work a long time. So yeah, it's fine and it's fair to be impatient, but think about how you can leverage this moment to learn, enjoy, and don't worry, the next move will come, but, but take the time to go deep into exploring this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's fine to be impatient, I'm myself impatient, but I'm working on it, so being aware <laughs> is a starting point. What I think is a good piece of advice, and it's not from me, from Simon Sinek, that all of you are, are listening to as well, one of the most, let's say, influential, uh, let's say, leadership and management guru, he speaks about the why. And I think it's a, it's a good advice for anyone starting, is to, to read that book and to reflect on your personal why your career, your life, what drives you deeply? Because then if you're coherent with your why, everything is much easier. Mm -hmm. In my case, living in Latin America was a dream. Working in sport was a very clear definition early. Combining business and sport. I like learning, mm -hmm. uh, I like impact. So then it guided some moves and it allowed me to make sure along the way I was mm -hmm. not lost without knowing exactly what I would do. I never thought I would work in tech. I never thought uh, I would go in Germany. I mean, lots of things like that right. happened to your point in the sequence while being unplanned, but somehow coherent with the why. And I think mm -hmm. it's a good reflection because many people I find are, are not taking ownership, right, of their own agenda. And then you, mm -hmm. you get pulled into opportunities, yes. which is fine. But sometimes to reconnect with yourself, say, yeah. hey, am I coherent with my own why? I think Correct. it's a good reflection. That's, that's great. Um, Olive, you're almost reaching uh, the end of our, our, our uh, podcast. Would you have any advice in terms of any books which have influenced your, your leadership career? Yeah, so I think you're going to receive lots of leaders that will share with you, uh, uh, let's say, uh, business leadership books. So I'll, I'll stay coherent with sport. So I'll <laughs> give you two books. Uh, I'll give you Legacy. Uh, that is the books um, uh, written by a former coach of the All Blacks. And I know rugby is not maybe the biggest sport in Brazil, but if you go into rugby culture, you understand the, the power of team play, the power of, uh, of having, let's say, uh, routines together, rituals. Uh, and you have a lot to learn in that book around uh, the goal as a leader, which is to leave the jersey in a better place. Mm -hmm. So when I leave Brazil in one or two years, it will not be finished. Someone will take over and will take Adidas to a different level. But at least if I was able to contribute on the culture, on the business, on the financials, on the impact to the society, because we do a lot on the communities to also give back people around us that need it, um, I think I'll be happy. So that's one legacy. The other one is Ate 43, which is written by uh, one of our best partners, Adidas, with Zero Berto. Mm -hmm. And he tells his life story uh, from, from living in the communities with very little possibilities uh, to being a world champion or, or to win the biggest titles uh, with Real Madrid, with Bayern. And he gives very, what I like in this book, is that it gives very practical tips on uh, on self-reflection on, on your own dream, uh, but also on how do you get there. So it's basically leaving some white page for you to fill in. Uh, how you get there to move into from planning to execution. So I think it's nice. It's a one hour read, easy. I would advise right. it. Great. Thanks a lot, Olivier. And, and do share with us uh, this information. So we'll probably maybe put it down in the link of, the, of our podcast as well, you know, so that, you know, our viewers can access it. Olivier Giannina, uh, General Manager of Brazil. Thank you very much for joining us. And then last, Professor Paul for concluding remarks. Yeah, actually, I'm going to, uh, to leave the, the final word to you. But uh, I just want to say that uh, it was a pleasure uh, to uh, have you here today. 
uh, to be with us, with Umesh uh, as well. And I hope uh, for our audience that you uh, enjoyed it as much as we did. So also, since we are in the, in the beginning, so do not hesitate to leave us some feedback. This would be uh, very much appreciated. And um, just uh, giving you the final word, uh, Olivier, is there any specific message that you want to, uh, to leave Maybe us? two of them. First of all, I'm very privileged in my life, so I was very happy to spend this time with you and hopefully give back uh, to some people who are reflecting on their own career. Um, and maybe uh, the second one is, uh, um, the power of sport in your own balance. So do sport three to four times a week, preferably in three tribes. You have a beautiful store online, so enjoy the enjoy. But I think uh, putting sport in your life is never a bad thing. Three to four times a week would be advice. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks a and lot. You have an excellent day ahead. Same. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you.